So Notion had their Make Notion event recently, which uncovered some of their recent releases and their plans for the future. And it didn't disappoint. There were so many new upgrades, including layout forms and new upgrades to the AI, even a brand new product. And in today's video, I wanted to overview all that you need to know about the Notion event and what it means for you as a Notion user. Welcome, my name is Francesco D'Alessio and welcome to Toolfinder. If you'd like to subscribe, you're welcome to. you can find it linked below. We also have a Notion newsletter which dives into new releases like this so you can get all the latest gossip, juice and everything you need to know about Notion. I'll put that in the link in the description if you're interested. Now before we begin, my my voice is a little bit hoarse, so I do apologize. Um, I actually missed the original Notion event, but I've very much caught up and have already some, uh, in some opinions that I'd like to share with you in the video. So the event started pretty much with a overview of how Notion is trying to envision making things with their uh, tool, essentially trying to be a bit more like Lego in building the future of software so that people can make stuff using it and uh, a little bit like Apple in some sense, they're aiming for a vision where it's a beautiful tool that can make beautiful tools. So as you can imagine, uh, that, that sort of set the precedent and the first of the releases was Forms. Now Forms is a new building block which will allow you to collect data and uh, collect up responses within Notion. It's actually something that a lot of people have wanted for for some time, but impressively, probably the most impressive thing about this is it's free with unlimited responses and unlimited submissions, which is really good, and you can build up your form using the form builder inside of Notion. Now, this is really interesting offering. Because of the new and more recent introduction of Notion Sites, which is essentially a domain and the ability to publish that domain, combining a form with a domain could be a really good way of setting out and collecting information into your Notion account, replacing something like Typeform or something like that in the future. So the introduction of forms is not only a benefit externally, but internally for teams looking to fix that problem. Now, next up, obviously focused a lot on the sort of artificial intelligence side of stuff, recapping some of the more recent features that they're working on in terms of uh, structure. But the biggest and probably most exciting was the new layouts that um, basically shift the properties area inside of Notion over to the right hand or left hand side, allowing you to better structure your account. Now, to be honest, this is really good, but at the same time, it's probably much more suitable for bigger companies that are looking to customize or almost white label their Notion account um, and more of a nice upgrade for those who are using it on a daily basis. But it definitely removes the noise from the existing Notion page and allows you to customize it even further. This is something that's available straight away and so is Forms. Now they moved on to their workflows ability, which introduced some new workflows and better way to create things like triggers from the existing automations you have. But most importantly, they introduced an external trigger for Gmail, allowing you to send Gmail emails from Notion. This is a really good one because it comes with everything that you need, like placeholders, information that's based inside of the database so that you can make action on it, which for many users will be a huge upgrade to the workflows and automations they have inside of Notion. Now, interestingly, Notion did bring up a statistic during this thing. I think it was 88 or 93, I'm not entirely sure because the blog's slightly different, but they actually said that an ex existing organization has 93 tools as part of the collective unit, which is a lot of tools to manage and a lot of context switching across the day. So you can start to see the notion of trying to embed these building blocks as a replacement for tools and become much more of an attractive workplace offering instead of just existing as a documents experience, which is very interesting. Now, the final sort of big update was the marketplace and the marketplace introduced a better way for creators to make templates. And this update it basically railroads the concept of Gumroad because what it does is take and allow you to manage the whole template experience using their marketplace, allowing you to distribute it, um, to market it internally through their database, um, their marketplace, and also essentially take payments and manage the whole process through there. Now Notion will take 10% of the payment, but I believe compared to Gumroad, that's fairly reasonable, but you will still make 90% and it's much more of a secure 
functional way to distribute templates. So I can imagine that being an incredible success for Notion, building upon what they've already had, just internalizing it and making it much more stronger. So for me, the biggest release was something called Notion Mail, which is set to be released in early 2025. But the application is a separate app, much like Notion Calendar, which essentially takes and connects with your Gmail and Google Workspace account to bring in emails and to be able to correlate them to your Notion databases and your Notion knowledge. Now, for me, I was already taken back by this concept. The ability to connect the knowledge base with your emails and help to contextualize that is really effective. But Notion introduced a few things. And what I wanna do in this segment is sort of talk about the pros and the cons that I see of this application. And I wanna start with the pros. So the pros of this experience is that you get a view per experience that you're working on. And this is really effective. When you're going inside of your inbox, sometimes it can just be an incredibly noisy experience. And creating a view would essentially take focus in on a particular department that you're working on or project that you're working on, taking the knowledge base and combine with the emails that you have. Now this is a huge update and something that I personally think is a really good thing inside of Notion. A really nice innovation that I used to think that could just be sold through maybe filters on the top of your superhuman account. But actually something like this combined with the knowledge base is incredibly powerful and something that will alert a lot of people to building their own knowledge base inside of Notion and to combine it with their emails. So in my opinion, that's a great addition. The second thing that, the second pro that I found incredibly beneficial was the autopilot feature, which sits in the top left-hand corner. And although they haven't given much information about this, takes in something called custom prompts. So for example, you could say, extract all of the major dates when these need to be done by, and it will create a tag on the email before you even go into it. And even things like make sure you flag all important emails as important can be really beneficial. Now, this is obviously really undercover and what they're actually fully gonna do with this, but the ability to communicate with your emails and to start coordinating productivity tags about them could be a great way to organize and triage your inbox. For example, it could say, remove all emails that have Sally in them, and it does all that. I do like Sally, I promise. The other ability that I found, the other pro that I found incredibly useful was the embed with the calendar. For example, it brings up a auto reply and starts corresponding based on uh, scheduling a call with that person, if relevant. It'll also take knowledge from the database using AI to better manage that communication and to write the actual draft and response, which I think is a great bonus. The other thing as well that I found pretty impressive is that the actual email builder is based around Notion. So you can use slash commands and write stuff up really fast, which for many people, writing emails is quite dull, but they already know the language of Notion when it comes to document management. So they'll probably find that incredibly beneficial too. So some of the cons that I think are worth considering when looking at this. Now, all of those views I was talking about can actually be organized like a database. So to do, doing, done. So that could be good in a way for organizing things that you're working on. And if it's a bigger project like an event or a launch or something like that, it can help correlate you in what you need to get going and the emails that are relevant to it. But for me, it could also mean additional triage, which you might need to do. And of course the co-pilot or the autopilot they call it, will help with that. I think it could add more additional abilities. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't fully tested it, but at the same time, I think that additional layer of database function in an email app could potentially go wrong, let's see. Now you're probably expecting more cons from me, but to be honest, I couldn't really find any. I thought this is a refreshing app that looks really good. And it's a shame it sort of doesn't have domain functions or powerful abilities with um, the actual like offline and privacy and things like that, which Skiff was originally built off of. The initial version of this looks really clean, focused, and it is much better. And to be honest, I'm very impressed with this. I'm very impressed with this because the structured AI is something that I've really been pushing with Notion. And it feels like the Notion calendar, Notion mail, feel like the way forward. So as a whole, the event really reminds me of Microsoft. This seems like Notion is trying to be the workplace experience or the workspace for your daily life. And for many people, that just feels like replacing Microsoft Office in a much bolder, cleaner, and more beautiful way. 
And that, in a way, does make a much more uh, impressive offering to Microsoft to acquire the company. Now, I would say probably two to three years down the line, it could be a very attractive offering for Microsoft just to come and swoop in and take this account because naturally the artificial intelligence abilities are there they seem to be building a team of artificial intelligence focused people with their recent acquisition of aquarium learning and they continue to invest in good quality design and experience something that microsoft has been lacking in many years so i do think that this is a brilliant update and something that I think a lot of Notion people, Notioneers, Notioners, will really enjoy and see the benefits from. So that was my opinions and hopefully it brought you up to date with all of the Notion releases. Please do let me know if you have any comments. And again, please do become a subscriber of the Notion newsletter. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you all very soon. Do make sure you subscribe below and I'll see you all very soon. And by then, hopefully my voice will have cleaned up.